Hi everybody, uh, this is my second part of the Nikon F2 overview and I'm going to cover in this one some accessories and uh, tell you more about the different finders fitted to this camera. Uh, first of all, the first accessory you can see is the CF1 case which is a soft case uh, specifically designed for the F2. It has a tripod uh, socket at the base uh, which I've covered with some felt so it doesn't scratch uh, tables etc but it's normally got a little hole in the centre for a standard tripod fitting nice soft case uh, for use with standard uh, lenses short lenses this one's a 50mm it'll work with other short lenses as well uh, to take it out of the case just unscrew the out at the bottom. And the camera will come out. <coughs> also fitted to this camera is is a strap, a AN1 strap which was designed for this camera. And it's a, a leather strap with nice little chrome uh, studs. Now this is a F2 uh, Photomic which is fitted with a DP1 head and that was available during the introduction in 1971 along with the DE1 uh, head as well. Now the DE1 finder is a uh, non-metered prism which is very similar to the Pyramid Pyramid a prism for the Nikon F, uh, and that say that was introduced at the same time as this one. This is the DP1. Now the DP1 has a CDS light meter, and it uses a needle system to uh, get the exposure. So obviously, when the the needle is centered, the exposure is correct. It also has a um, flash ready light which I'll show you in a short while when I connect the flash to it and it uses the centre weighted metering where 60% of the reading is taken from the 12mm uh, centre circle and uh, that's a, uh, a metering system Nikon use quite a lot so that's the DP1 now that say was introduced 71 the same time the camera came out the next finder which came out was a DP2 and that was introduced in 1973 and the difference there was it used LEDs on the top instead of the needle and it used a plus and a minus uh, indicated by two uh, arrows and that's the way you, you set the exposure that way by getting both uh, the LEDs lit uh, you could also do a timed exposure with that one, you could set the shutter speed dial to B and on the top of the ASA dial was a, a button you could press in and turn to set shutter speed settings of 2, 4, 6 and 8 seconds that's another feature introduced with that finder um, with the DP2 finder the camera is known as an F2S Photomic the next finder to be released was the DP3 and that was in 1976 the camera was known then as a F2SB and the feature that came with that was the new metering cells, the SPB cells which uh, are more sensitive to changes in light and that used three LEDs on the top and in the viewfinder you had a plus, a circle and a minus and obviously when just the circle was lit that was the uh, correct exposure it also introduced a eyepiece curtain for the viewfinder to stop any light getting in when using the self timer or on a tripod things like that the next finder to be introduced which was in 1977 uh, they brought two finders at the same time and that was because of the introduction of AI lenses uh, because all the previous finders 
have to couple with the lens via the prong. And when AI lens were introduced in 1977, they brought out the DP11, and the camera then was known as an F2A. You could tell that quite easily by a, a, an A lettering on the on the front of the finder. And that obviously had AI coupling. It uh, was able to use the uh, coupling ring on the lens rather than the prong. And it used the centre needle system, same as the DP1 finder, which actually I prefer. <clears throat> Uh, at the same time in 77 was the DP12 finder and the camera then is known as the F2AS and that was the last finder they introduced and again AI coupling uh, as the DP2 uh, finder this was with it used three LEDs plus naught and minus for the uh, exposure setting so that's run through the different finders. Can't show you them, of course. I only have this uh, this one, the DP1. But I do like this finder. The only restriction, obviously, is um, you're limited to lenses with prongs because it needs it to couple with the pin uh, that protrudes from the finder itself. But uh, a nice finder. I like the uh, needle system. I much prefer that than the LEDs. I uh, don't like uh, LEDs for some reason, it don't seem to work with me, but I like the needle. Get it centred and uh, it's a good indication of a correct exposure. It works well for me anyway. Right, I'll show you some other things, accessories, etc. for this camera. Start with another lens. I may have shown you this before, I can't remember. Uh, this is a, uh, a wide angle lens. A 28mm f3.5 again it's one of the early pre-AI lenses and uh, as you know these lenses simply attach like all other Nikon lenses to other Nikon cameras as you see when you remove a lens on the DP1 the prong uh, protruding prong in the finder recenters but as you fit the lens to the bayonet uh, until it clicks and then to engage the prong on the lens into the finder you just turn it fully to the left, fully to the right on this finder and it sets the correct aperture in the window in this case it's uh, 3.5 so it's actually in between two numbers there uh, so that, way, that will work correctly now with that uh, that lens fitted. Obviously the other thing you need to check for the uh, metering is make sure you've got the correct ASA speed set on the uh, ASA, uh, the speed set on the ASA dial. That's another lens fitted. Uh, another little accessory I'll show you first is a, a soft release button. This is a AR1 uh, and it's for uh, the Nikon F F2 and I think it fits on some other cameras like the FM and it just simply you've got a little thread that's on the uh, goes around the shutter button and that just simply screws on and it's got a little uh, release inside it extends onto the uh, shutter button so you screw that on And it gives you a higher button and it's got a soft, softer release touch to it which uh, obviously some people prefer and actually I leave it fitted. Uh, it's something I, I think feels better. Set that to uh, half a second. So that's the soft shutter release. You can also get a AR2, uh, which is this cabled release for when using the camera on a tripod. And again, that simply screws, has a screw thread that, that goes onto the, the, the shutter, around the shutter button and gives you a cable release option. 
Uh, other accessories I've got here, um, you can buy, obviously buy different focusing screens for these cameras, F and F2, use the same focusing screen. I've got a K screen fitted, uh, but I do have a E screen fitted to the Nikon F, which I can interchange with this, and that's got a grid, grid uh, on it. It's just a box for one, there's nothing inside this one. A close-up attachment, uh, which are handy. Obviously different size, like a filter ring, this is 52mm, which is very common. Lens filter size, uh, this is a number 2 one. And it just allows you to get, obviously, much closer to the subject. Because lots of these lenses, I only focus down to, um, well that one's 0.6 meters. With this close-up attachment connected to a 50mm 1.4 for example it will let you focus between 15 and 30 centimeters just, just get you that bit closer that's that I'll show you a flash which this is a dedicated flash which came out in 1978 and it only actually came out that year it's the SB7E and it's just for use with the F2 and the uh, Nikon F. It's not through the, the lens metering, obviously. It uses a, a sensor on the front to measure the light. And you set the, uh, well, you use the dial to set the SA speed. And you've got a manual option and two automatic settings, which you flip this button to one or the other. and you set 1 60 of a second on the shutter speed and you set the appropriate aperture on the aperture dial. Just to show you that way again, just put the 50mm lens back on. Just recouple the lens so it shows 1.4. The flash as a dedicated shoe. Now I've just put some tape on that because it's a metal uh, shoe and it obviously it can scratch the uh, accessory shoe on the camera. So I, I put uh, some tape on it to stop it doing that. It doesn't stop it functioning. So that simply just slides onto the accessory shoe. So it makes it more difficult with the tape on it, makes it a bit stiffer. And then you turn the ring at the bottom, which firmly locates it, as well as it makes a contact with a pin here from the accessory shoe on the flash, and that allows the ready light in the viewfinder to work. So you know when the, the flash is ready. So if I just check, I've got SA200 on there, ASA200 on the dial, switch the flash on, just got batteries in, thank god. <laughs> and if I've got it set on the red symbol there, I need to set f5.6 on the lens, which will give me a range as indicated on the scale there. Set f5.6 on the lens. Which is already set. One sixty of a second on the shutter. I've got ready light showing the eyepiece viewfinder. I think you can just catch that. And this flash as well, you can rotate it. Uh, it goes from an upright position to a horizontal position two ways, either to the side of the camera or as a central flash. And then to fire it, of course, got all the settings set up correctly, the ready light's on, and you can take a picture. That's a nice um, dedicated flash for the F2 and F. Just remove that. And the other thing I can show you is a accessory shoe adapter 
This is a AS1 flash unit coupler, which allows you to fit any standard hot shoe flash this camera and this all automatically has a uh, padded base it won't scratch the uh, shoe on your camera and with this you just slide it on in the same fashion turn it and that gives you a standard hot shoe connection uh, which will allow you to use modern uh, flashes I've used it with an SB 800 successfully and uh, it doesn't give you a ready light in the viewfinder there but obviously you've got the um, ready light on the flash unit itself to show you that that's a nice little accessory to let you use um, ordinary flash units and just to show you um, On the SB7E there is a little adapter because the flash range coverage, sorry, the uh, angle coverage is, let me get this right, I think it's 35mm, starts at 35mm um, with this little adapter, so S, just get this right, it's SW1, sorry SW2. That just pops on the front and that gives you uh, coverage for a 28mm lens. It's a nice little accessory for that flash unit. So there you go, some accessories, etc. Just told you about the finders as well. We found that useful. A uh, lot more information there. And uh, so the camera's working well, I've run a film through it, I wasn't very happy with the processing but uh, that's not the camera's fault. But I'm very happy with it, very, very nice camera, lovely to use and uh, as I say it's Nikon's best fully manual mechanical camera they ever made. Thanks for watching again, I'll do more overviews of other cameras soon, probably the F3 next and some other lenses to come, so um, subscribe to me and uh, keep an eye out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you soon.